Oh, hi everybody. Uh, no silver today, although I did buy 40 ounces uh, last week and I bought uh, some fractional gold which I really, really uh, uh, tell everybody all the time don't ever buy fractional because there's such a markup. But Atmex had a sale on the gold maple leaves, quarter ounce only 10 percent, only $10 over spot. So luckily I got in before the big gold boost. I got in Saturday morning and <clears throat> And since then, I've, uh, I've made some money on it already. Uh, but I bought uh, four quarter ounces, so I got uh, an ounce of gold for $40 over spot. But that's not what I want to talk about today. I uh, just been burdening a new friend of mine in the UK. His name is Danny. I won't give his uh, I won't give his channel because he's a pretty bashful guy, uh, but but a very nice guy. And uh, uh, I thought, well, well, why well, just Rant and rave on, make poor Danny read it. Uh, might as well subject all of you to it. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, this poor kid, 15-year-old, uh, killed himself because he was uh, being bullied. And uh, a couple of days ago, um, I was just going flipping through the different things on YouTube, and here was a 14-year-old that was thinking about killing himself because he's constantly bullied and his his parents um, dislike the fact that he's gay and and he, he doesn't have any real friends at school and the school system isn't doing anything to help him and it's just a, a damn shame that the society we live in today there's still people who are in this situation so I wrote I wrote him and uh, gave him my phone number and you know told him if he ever felt bad to call me uh, but then uh, the best thing I did was I, there was a, a, a two, two kids that were both 15, one that uh, came out of the closet and was describing uh, the fact that uh, the gay life is totally justifiable and uh, and uh, it's, it's just one aspect of his life and he was such a nice kid. And then there was another one that came out and was describing the horror show that he had gone through and uh, I, I had never been in contact with these either one of these uh, youths before, and I asked them both if, if they would look at this at this poor kid's uh, at his uh, channel and and try to write him because it would be much more uh, understanding and much more helpful if someone uh, his own age uh, wrote him and, and tried to help him. And I hope that uh, they both wrote, uh, sent me copies of the letters that they sent, and are very very nice and very to the point. And I really appreciate, I appreciate very much them doing so. But it's uh, just this crazy world we live in anymore. Uh, I have a friend that was a, a medic at uh, Guantanamo Bay, and he used to tell me, well, he, he's in the Navy, and the, Na the Navy provides medics for all the Marines. I guess the Marines just train people how to kill them, not to how to save people. So they borrow all their medics from the Navy. Well, anyway, he was at. Uh, Guantanamo Bay, and one of his main jobs was to patch up the prisoners and so forth that uh, that uh, needed uh, medical treatment after we got done beating them up. Uh, now the the really serious ones we just send out and let somebody else beat them up for us. That uh, Obama has has not closed Guantanamo Bay, which was his. He said the first thing he was going to do when he got in office was close it. They haven't closed it. There's no fewer people there. They they. There are people there that both Bush and Cheney admitted, on you know, in conversations that that uh, that other people were present that they that they knew that there were a lot of people there that were totally innocent, but then they were afraid to release them because they didn't know what they'd do. Well, hell yes, you don't know what they're going to do. You keep people for five or six years, torture them, and and knowing that they are innocent to start with, and of course, if you let them go, they might decide then to become terrorists. Uh, who wouldn't in their right mind? But then let's look at the other side. Let's look at look at all this craziness in this freaking world. Uh, you have you have suicide bombers. Uh, a lot of them are just uh, brain poor, brainwashed kids, and they come they come out of out of these uh, mosques. And uh, this is not a statement, a universal statement about mosques. Uh, in a minute, it, it might become a universal statement about Islam, but it's it's not uh, meant to be a universal statement about mosques. And, and certain of these, the uh, uh, imams in them uh, recruit for 
terrorism. Now it's always the recruiters, and it's always the ones saying, "Oh, here, if you only, if you only go out there and 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 strap a bomb yourself and blow up a bunch of innocent people that have nothing to do with this, with the war, and nothing to do with anything except the death toll of them makes it makes it more scary for everybody else out there." And what they tell them, they tell them they promise they're going to provide them. Or they'll have twenty virgins in heaven. 20 virgins in heaven. Now, how many freaking virgins can there be left in heaven? You know, if every one of these morons is going to get 20 of them. And the same virgin, if she was on this, on the planet and not in heaven, if, if she had any, the slightest indiscretion, not even intercourse or anything, the slightest indiscretion in many of these, these Muslim countries, they do what they call honor killings. So her brother or her father could kill her with 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 uh, uh, no legal status to the girl at all, that they could because uh, women are often considered property in the Muslim in Muslim states, that they could kill her, right, for some indiscretion, and and never be prosecuted for it. Now, what in the fuck kind of society do they live in? What the fuck kind of religion can Islam be? Uh, and what the fuck kind of sh is Shia law good for if they if if you can sacrifice your daughter? Now what I mean this it is so absurd. Now if she wasn't a virgin it, here, she could be killed for it, taken out and stoned. All right, but if she's a virgin in heaven, then 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 she has to line up with 19 other virgins for some nutcase that's that's going to go out and kill innocent people. Now, is this, how much sense does this make? How, how many nutcases are there? How easy is it to brainwash these people? You know, it just is so extraordinary and, and, and so dumb. Now, what happens after she's deflocked in heaven? Because she's no longer a virgin. They kick her the fuck out. Then where does she go? Right? The 20 of them line up. This guy bags the 20 of them. And, and uh, that's his reward. Well, what's he get after that? He's dead. You know, he's already dead. I mean, how, how, what friggin' nonsense is this? And here's another case. Uh, this uh, friend of mine that was a medic in Guantanamo told me that they used to have to keep the young prisoners, and we have we have prisoners, we had prisoners there, they're old now. Uh, we had prisoners there that were as young as 14 years old because uh, they just gobbled, you know, they just got picked up in a raid, and there they are. And they have to keep the young uh, male prisoners from the older male prisoners, because the older male prisoners, and this is in, of all believers in Islam, that's why they're there, because they're fighting for the Quran and for Shia law, would would rape the young ones. Now that's just considered a form of masturbation or something to them, you know. It's co common practice, and nothing happens. But yet, if you get two uh, of the young ones, like those two 15-year-olds that were in Iran, that, that were caught uh, uh, in, a, in a sexual embrace, uh, two young men, they took them out and hung them, right? Now, if it was a 40-year-old guy screwing the 15-year-old, that's fine. It's okay. Uh, the 15-year-old, nothing's thought bad about him, and nothing's thought bad about the 40-year-old because there's no love involved. But you have love involved, and they and, and bring Shia Law in, and these, and these two kids were hung. This is the kind of crap shit that, we're, that we support because of our, our dependence on oil, because because of our dependence on on thinking that we are the watchdog of the fucking world and that we're going to control the spigot on this oil, it is absolutely crazy. We support societies that treat women the, like cattle, you know, and in some cases probably cattle have more rights than women. The, uh, half the half the world's population are women. Why half the world's population isn't in in crazy arms? We we how can we send a secretary of state that's a woman over to a country where women have no fucking rights? You know, just absolutely absolutely absurd. And to think that this is all this is all just common practice. Something you know, um, there's there's a, well you say something has to be done. That's too easy because well, what can be done? You know. That, that these countries have to be boycotted, the uh, you know that that uh, someone you know somehow uh, Islam has to come into the 20th century. It's just ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. But then, but then when we look at our own cases, 
how, how much different is it when some 14 year old kid has the, the guts to come out and say he's gay and then turn around and be bullied to the point where he figures he's better dead than alive. This is a fucked up society and we got the tea parties and the fanatical crazy Christian right to thank for this. If they had their way, they would, they would be all living out of the freaking Bible. A lot of these morons, you couldn't get one, one presidential candidate to admit that they believe in evolution. Now you're telling me Ron Paul, who's a fucking doctor, or doesn't believe in evolution. Of course he does. But he's willing to lie about that fucking thing just to just to stay on that fucking stage. This we have reached a point of of absolute uh, ignorance. And the Republicans, what do they want to do? They want to reduce the minimum wage, and they want to lower the age of people, the kids, so they can work at a younger age. Oh, that's good. Let's turn ourselves into a third world country so we can produce jobs that don't pay enough, so that anybody can have a standard of living. We are a sick fucking society, and we got the one percenter to thank for it. And every one of you that has the time or the energy should be out in the streets. Because until we threaten to close this whole fucking system down, nothing is going to change. Democrats ain't going to change it. The Republicans ain't going to change it. As long as it's nothing but a money-producing society for the one percenters, that we're, we're lost. Your your parents don't know how well they are off, but they will shortly because you kids are screwed. You're going to come out of college with a tremendous amount of debt. There aren't, there aren't going to be any good jobs. You're not going to have medical care. You are screwed. And the place for you now is in the damn streets. It worked uh, with the Vietnam War, and it'll, it'll work again today. You close down Wall Street. If the fucking the market collapses, everybody takes a hit. But then something has to turn around and bring this system back into order. So um, that's my, I'm sorry, but I want to, I want to thank Danny uh, because this had to be said. And, and there's no reason that only Danny should listen to it. Uh, I think we all, we all have to listen to it and we all have to become part of the solution. Thank you very much.